You know, real quick, just wanted to say, sorry about my nasally voice. I am very sick. Ever since pixels could be read, fear-mongering has spread. Vilified by schools, churches, and news outlets, video games in the past have received a bad rep from ignorant and scared people, typically ones that have a hard time adapting to change. And that reputation was perpetuated by media fear-mongering. This topic has been mulled over countless times, but with recent games coming out, with even more hyper-realistic graphics, it's reignited fears of video games becoming too realistic and inciting violence in those who play them. Basically, the thinking is that someone who plays video games that have a degree of violence in them, especially young children, are going to see the violent acts and become desensitized and more inclined, or even encouraged, to go out and commit the same atrocities that you would see in games. The first instance of media coverage of virtual violence occurred in 1976 with an arcade game called Death Race. Visually, it was a black and white top-down driving game where the player was given 30 seconds to run over as many people as they could. Basically, imagine Pong-style graphics, but with a little pixelated car committing vehicular manslaughter. The game was also just a modified version of the game called Destruction Derby, in which the only enemy you would face were other cars. In both 1976 and 1977, it was in the top 10 highest grossing arcade games in the United States, and a very hot topic for news outlets. Dr. Gerald Dreisen, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right, a behavioral psychologist took an, took an active stance against the game, claiming that the fact that the player is actively participating in the violence, rather than watching it on a movie or a TV show, brings them closer to committing real acts of violence. While he does say that it's not going to make everyone get behind the wheel and run people over, he was convinced that the game would most definitely cause many instances of vehicular manslaughter. There have also been a handful of instances where enough people complained about the game to get it removed from a few arcades and establishments entirely. Now, looking at the game, I'm sure any rational human would immediately come to the conclusion that there is no way it would incite violence in anyone who plays it. If anything, people who are to play this game would probably find it very boring and understimulating. No one would be worried about what the real-world applications of the game would be, and it would just end up collecting dust. But this was 1976, and pixels you can move around on a screen weren't really seen all that much before, so, you know, they used a lot of their imagination. Because it was new and unfamiliar, it scared people. And news outlets thrive on things that both scare people and are not well known by the public. That makes it incredibly easy to pump out an article blaming the game for violence and crimes being committed. You can also even argue that the used video games is an easy scapegoat for why crime and civil unrest was happening, because that's easier to blame than deeply rooted systematic issues. Then, there was Doom. Not the first FPS game, but the first highly successful and popular one. When this game came out, with its, you know, grotesquely detailed sprites depicting demons and gore, and a first-person perspective of a space marine mowing through hordes of the damned, and in all of its pixelated bloody glory, it was a huge topic of controversy. In the same way that Death Race was controversial. In 1994, when Doom was released, people were once again worried that its level of realism was too much and it would cause people to become hostile and more inclined to violence. There were a number of atrocities that the news outlets immediately pointed to Doom as a scapegoat, including the Columbine Massacre in 1999. Instead of pointing out the obvious mental instability from the two attackers and how it went unnoticed long enough for them to become mentally unstable, they went with their usual campaign of blaming video games just because it's an easy target, easy scapegoat. As much as I want to say the majority of news outlets didn't really have strong beliefs on video games, and it was simply for relevance and money, there are people 
who hold real and very strong beliefs against video games. One man in particular by the name of Jack Thompson, an anti-video game activist and disbarred attorney, has a lot to say about direct links between violent video games and teenage violence, claiming that the games were used for murder training and learning how to kill more effectively. After looking at interviews and direct quotes from the guy, it's pretty obvious the man's a nut. Before he targeted video games, he was going after rap music and record labels that he considered to be obscene and offensive. Basically, the guy heard something that was less white and uptight than his standards would allow and wouldn't stand for. The guy is such a fucking goober. There's so much to talk about on this guy, I could dedicate a whole video to him, but this little segment will just have to do for now. As the years have gone on, video games have become more and more realistic, with uh, Quake being the first popular FPS game to feature true 3D graphics with polygons instead of sprites, Valve creating the Gold Source engine using a modified Quake 4 engine, then from that creating Source and Source 2, and the Unreal game engines and id tech engines rolling out with more and more advanced features as time went on, and people were worried less and less about how video games could be too realistic and violent, and news outlets reported on it less and less. Recently, however, as some of you may know, a game called Unrecord has been announced. In the teaser trailers for the game, it easily fooled basically everyone looking at the footage into thinking that they were watching real body cam footage of someone shooting and killing in a warehouse. Uh, the developer even faced accusations of faking the game and instead of just like recording real footage and calling it a game. And he debunked this pretty much immediately by, you know, posting screenshots and videos in the in-game editor. And this has reignited this ancient debate of if a video game can become too realistic to blur the lines of fiction and reality and cause the user to become violent trained killers. It's really fucking funny to me. History repeats itself, and looking at essentially a timeline of fear-mongering, this is the exact same thing that's been happening. So my stance is pretty obvious. I do not believe that video games create violent people, no matter how realistic they are. What's important is monitoring your children and peers, and if they seem to be mentally unwell or susceptible to violent themes, then it's probably best to you know, steer them away from the games and have them seek mental help. Don't blame the game. Look at the user in their environment. If you stuck around to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you greatly. Please like the video if you liked watching, leave a comment if you've got something to say, and subscribe if you want to stick around for more. You have an incredible day.